can start right now. No, but <laughs> go for it. All right, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me here. Um, I really appreciate that you guys take the time to get to know the candidates. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't always want to folks. And, uh, you know, going through this process of becoming a candidate and running for office has taught me a lot about why we should get to know who our candidates are and, and um, try to pick the best ones for the job. Uh, my name is Richard Gammon. I've been in the communications industry for about 27, 28 years now. I've been in the same company for 27 years. Um, I, when I started working for the company, I was part-time summer help, working my way up to middle and upper management. Today, I'm the, uh, the technical uh, operations manager for Texas. Um, and uh, I think I have a very strong technical background. I've got a good background in management, working with people. I've worked with um, uh, various companies, uh, negotiating contracts and agreements. Um, worked with the city of Houston doing some of that. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, I decided to get involved in, in this race because uh, I've I've had the privilege of knowing a few people over in East Montgomery County who have become uh, members of the community. Uh, Justice Peace, James Metz, uh, Roddy Hayden, who's the, county, the um, commissioner over there. And I have seen improvements that they brought to the community. I've seen um, just the benefit of having good people in office and what they can do for the community. And I thought, you know, I would like to be able to do that. I would like to participate and give back to the community. This particular job, um, and, I, and I see it as a job, and I see everybody that I visit and see and talk to as, as my future bosses. Um, I feel like I'm applying for a job for the first time after 27 years. And uh, th this I just see this job as one where I can make a difference, where I believe I can do a better job than is being done, and um, one that I will be committed to just like I am today with my present job and my family. And start questions. If you don't mind, I think I'll listen. Questions? So you set the first question. I'll ask the first question. Um, do you have any kind of legal experience or any experience in terms of uh, uh, law? I have no law experience. I have no legal experience other than the experience I have, like I say, negotiating agreements and contracts and working with our legal teams and doing so. Um, other than that, I have no legal experience. And no legal background. Thank you. So do you feel that you, uh, without that experience, you can come up with speed quick enough to do the job? I believe so. I think I'm a pretty uh, fast study. Because um, you're up against some pretty experienced judges there. I understand. She's been there a while. Um, it's also been my experience that experience is not necessarily the best thing for our country or for you know, um, some of our representatives in government. Who else got a question? I do. Go for it. Okay, um, and the question was talking about what goals do you have in mind if you are elected and you said to reduce the docket or open cases, um, how would you do that? Um, when, when I look at uh, this particular court and compared to all the other courts in, in, in our county, it is um, by far the, the one that has the, the most open tickets. And when I say the most, I'm not just talking about the most, I'm talking about a notable difference two thirds, um, uh, maybe two, twice as many, three times as many. Um, I'll give you some numbers. The last time I looked, and it's been a little while, it's been a, a month or so, um, there were about 60,000 open cases to the, the next highest in the county, which was around 20,000 open cases. And um, if, if, you're, if you're staffed appropriately, if your team is trained appropriately, and you're managing efficiently, you should be running at about the same level, you know, relatively close. Somebody's got to be the highest, but by that much, I, I, I have concerns that maybe not so. 
Thank you. So do you think that's a fair comparison since, you know, East County is not going to have near the number of traffic ticks as you know, Woodlands, right? You know, I didn't compare just, I'm sorry, give me to interrupt your question. No, let's go ahead. Um, when, when I looked, I didn't look just at East County. I looked at the entire, the, the entire, our entire county, okay, not just East County or Precinct 4 or Precinct 3. I looked at all precincts. This was the one that was the highest. Um, and again, compared compared to all the rest of them, it was, it was you know, you could put, probably put a couple of them in, in there. Uh, when you look at um, the incoming amount of uh, cases, there are a little bit more cases that are coming in compared to some of the other locations. But again, if you're staffed properly, if you're trained properly, and if you're doing the things you're supposed to, then you should be able to keep up with what's coming in. And, and that's not what's happening. So you're, you're, I'm hearing you say you're, that she's basically not efficient enough or not working hard enough or I'm not sure why. I mean, that, that, that's, that's what I'm hearing you say. I mean, am I, well, what I'm saying am is, I hearing is you that, properly? that it appears to me that something is not working right. And I think that we need to get in there and find out. Next question. Can you kind of describe to us your, the job description? What will you be doing? Um, one of the responsibilities, obviously, is uh, well, the the primary, the one of the primary responsibilities for that 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 position is you're responsible for the entire office. You have an office. You have a group of people that work for you. You may hire an office manager to handle your team, but you're still responsible for everything that happens in that office. So, in my opinion, one of the primary responsibilities is basically everything that that office does or produces. Then you, you've got um, court cases that, that you're going to have to hear, um, misdemeanor cases, small claims cases, truancy cases from the schools, um, uh, traffic violations, I'm, I'm not sure if I said that already. Um, another responsibility is that uh, the JP is responsible for um, inquest. If there's a, a death in the area that's not happened in the hospital, they're, they're responsible for reporting and going out and pronouncing. Um, and uh, there's another one, and I just went blank. I'm sorry, my head just... <laughs> um, but those are generally what, what they're responsible for. Maybe marriages for those who run the I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> I, knew, I knew there was, that, that was it. In fact, I'm getting teased quite a bit about that one um, <laughs> by, by, by my current bosses. So. Next question. So curfews. Yeah, what is, do you, are you familiar with the current laws on curfew in the county? I'm not. So it's, uh, Anybody under 17, I believe, um, can be stopped between the hours of midnight and I think 6 a.m. Um, and you're, you know, you can be going to work. Um, so, so you can be going to work or um, to your house. Community tour. Yeah, and that may not be exactly right. That's okay. close. So you've got, say the same. You got your, your do you. What are your What's your view on that? And then, say you get a case. I mean, what's the appropriate punishment for someone who's uh, out, you know, breaking bottles and causing trouble in some abandoned place, you know, at two a.m. Two or three, two or three teenagers are sixteen, and they're they're just out breaking bottles and on public property, some parking lot target or something like that. What? Honestly, I, you know, again, as I mentioned, I have no legal background, so that, that's an area that, that I would, obviously I'm going to have a learning curve when I get into office, and, but these are things that, um, there, there are some established metrics for that kind of thing, and, and I, you know, again, that would be something that I'll be able to pick up on really quick, um, but, um, you know, without knowing, I didn't, you know, I wasn't aware that we had a curfew, so it's not something I've given a lot of thought to at this point. Okay. Next question. Am I going to be the only one asking questions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. 
So, uh, how long have you been voting in the Republican primary? Um, I would say pretty much since I earned the right. I think I've missed a few, a few opportunities, but um, I I got my citizenship in 2003, and uh, I've tried to make a point to vote in the Republican primary and uh, and the uh, general election every time. I, I, I didn't know you had just gotten your citizenship. 2003, yes, sir. Cool. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. It was, a, it was a very proud day for, for myself and my family. Um, yeah, I'm curious to hear more about that. Um, How long did it take you to go through that process? Um, I moved to, to the country when I was um, 17, back in 1980. And we came in, uh, my, my dad had a work visa, and our family was allowed to come in. Um, under that program. Um, we applied for residency, and I had a rocky road of it because during the time that we applied and our family got approved for residency, I turned, I think it was 19 at the time. I can't remember exactly. Um, I had this all worked out in my head. And uh, so essentially I, I was too old and I was denied, and so I, I was told that I had to reapply and my family had to be sponsors for me to get it. And uh, so I reapplied, and um, during that process, I, I got a. So this is like 1982. Uh, yeah, yeah, 80. Well, let me think about this again. I, I had yeah. math all worked out in my head, and but then, okay, the, so it took 20 years. It, yeah, it took me a long time. I'll tell you, I did not uh, immediately seek uh, citizenship. You know? um, I was, uh, I became a resident through um, through the naturalization act that President Reagan passed. And, uh, you know, I was content with that. And uh, one day I woke up and I said, you know, this is not good enough anymore. And I said, I want to be more of a participating member, participating member of the community. So I went after my, my citizenship. Next question. I, I originally, I was born in, on the island of uh, Trinidad and Tobago. I've lived in Venezuela, Peru, and then Brennan, Texas. Last Montgomery County. You state up here that your judicial philosophy is conservative. Ah. Um, <coughs> there, there's a lot of, um, I, I guess from a conservative standpoint, I, I believe in, in gun rights. I believe in, 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 the, in the, the, the punishment should fit the crime. Um, I believe that uh, that um, you know, look at um, marriage. I think marriage should be between a man and a woman. Um, th those type of things. Does that answer your question? I mean, yeah, I just I mean, conservative is a is a term that it's a broad term that people have different meanings for it, and I just kind of want to have a better understanding of what that means to you and have you describe it to me because it's not really clear exactly um, how that, that's used because, um, you know, I can drive up and down the road all over the place and I see the term conservative views and, and I, I want to understand how, how it's applicable to you and what does it mean to you because it's, in some respects, different people have different uh, well, descriptions. You know, Fiscal responsibility is important to me as a businessman. Um, nothing drives me more crazy than, than, than wasteful spending that our, that our federal government does. It's just completely out of control and infuriates me. And, um, you know, I think that can be drilled down to, to the local levels as well. Um, and when, I, when you see some of these things that, that happen in our communities, if you look at um, this fiasco with the jail that they had recently, you know, that kind of stuff. It, you know, to me, that's anti-conservative. So it's, it's those those types of things. That, you know. So I, it sounds like you're, you're speaking from a political perspective, but how about from a judicial perspective? You know, when I when I wrote that, it's been a while back, and I and I really did some thought on that. Honestly, right now, it's, it's, it's escaping me, I'm sorry. 
Next question. Go ahead. Okay. I'm just curious. Um, you, you became a citizen in 2003, and congratulations. I'm glad that you actually became a citizen. Um, what are your thoughts on the whole immigration issue right now and amnesty and that? Well, you know, I benefited from an amnesty program. On the other hand, I was here legally and working, you know, I applied three different times to uh, to get the, to get my citizenship, and uh, you know I did it the legal way. Um, at the time that, that I was going through the process, I had a girlfriend, and she said, "Well, let's get married so that you don't have to do this." And I said, "No, I'm not going to do it. It's not uh, no way, no how, absolutely." So you know, and, and I believe in that. You know, if you're going to do it, do it legal, do it the right way. So I have no use. You know, it, I believe it, if you pick them up, send them home. You know. Maybe this is too personal, but did you marry? Pardon? I said maybe this is too personal, but did you end up marrying? We we did end up getting married after 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 I got my residency, <laughs> and unfortunately it didn't work out. You know, um, that leads into the other question. <laughs> um, it didn't work out, and, but uh, I'm happily married. My wife and I've been, been married now for 18 plus years. I mean, eight, eight, eight year old son. <laughs> sorry, 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 eight. Next I, question, Greg, go ahead. Um, do you, I know it's, you can't look into the future, but what are your uh, aspirations as a justice of the peace? Is this something you want to do just as a private citizen and then make some improvements and get out, or do you want to make this a career? I wouldn't call it a career. Um, or a step up. Old I don't, coach. I don't, I, don't, I definitely don't have any desire to step up. I'm, I'm, I'm not a politician. I'm not an attorney. I'm not, you know, I've been with the same company for 27 years, and um, I'm there because I, I like what I do. I like the, the, the business that I'm in. I like the people that I work for, the people that I work with. Um, I really felt like, I, I really feel like, I, that like I, would, I want to contribute back to the community. I want, I want to do it in a, in a, in a venue that, that I can have, an, have a positive effect on. I really see this job as one that, that I can, can make a difference in. And um, I have no aspirations to do anything different. Um, I hope that I would do it maybe at least two or three times, you know, and do a good job of it. Beyond that, I have no additional desires. Thank you. Next question. Peter. Yeah, you know, uh, what experience or contact with the JP gave you the, uh, birth the idea in you that you could make an improvement there? The contact that I had was more, and this is where JP Precinct 4 does come in. I had a lot of contact with, uh, with Judge Max, and I've had a lot of contact with his court. Um, uh, I have um, you know, just been fascinated by, for a long time, the courts and so on. And uh, so I spent time in his court went through, I can't tell you how many hours that, that I spent watching how the cases are processed, watch how the office functions and how they process things. And, and it's just, you know, the, the overall, the, the job, and the, especially the, the court-related part of it, I'm not so, you know, the, the other side of that um, is, is appealing, but the court side of it and, and dealing with the public and, and being part of the community really is good. Yeah. Well, is, is Metz a friend? Is that how you? Um, I, I met him. He came into our office to buy advertising um, he, on his first run for office, and you know we sat down and, and talked a little bit, and um, you know I asked him what his background was. He says I'm a logger. He says, but there's there's a problem here in, in the in the community, and I want to make a difference. And, you know that, that just really impressed me, and so you know I've grown to respect him. I wouldn't call us friends. We don't hang out, you know. But uh, 
I would definitely consider him somebody that I have to respect. And uh, he's been willing to show me things and teach me things. How did you meet him? Again, he came into our office one day to, to purchase advertising. And uh, that was the, the first time he ran for office and, and actually lost that, that election. And, um, you know, he started, I got to know him a little bit during that time. And he came back again when he ran for the, you know, the second time. I've known him ever since. Uh, two part question. When's the last time you read the party platform? Or any, any planks on there that you disagree with? Pardon? When's the last time you read the party platform? And are there any planks on there that you disagree with? Uh, I, I, I did read it um, not that long ago. I did not memorize it. Um, so. <laughs> Um, okay, I haven't either. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, that's the thing. When I got in, when I got into this process, I mean, I was trying to read everything, and there's just so much information. You know, I, I even, um, I, I, I mean, I've known about the Constitution. I've studied it when I was in high school, but I've downloaded it onto my phone now. You know, and I, you know, I take a closer look at it. Okay, you know, what are we talking about here? So again, I haven't memorized it, but um, I have read it. Next question. Are there any parts of the Constitution you have a problem with? Nothing that I know. Nothing that comes to mind um, other than the changes that they keep trying to make to it that uh, take us in a negative direction. For example? Um, um, God, was, again. <laughs> um, Pardon? I was going to say, where do you want me to start? Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, I, I guess maybe I should rephrase it, that, that part of the answer is that our government continues to seize power that was not given to them in our original constitution. They continue to change the rules to, to, to give them more power and to keep them in, in more control. And, and that's that's what I'm, that's the example. Uh, and, and it's, I mean, I can't give you any specific. Okay. But, but that's it in a nutshell. Okay. Next question, Peter. Uh, from your experience, how much of your job uh, involves warrants? Um, I, I, you know, issuing warrants. Do you, do you issue warrants? The, yes, you would issue warrants. So um, how, how will you uphold the Constitution in that activity regarding issuing warrants? What is, I mean, can you be more specific? I mean, well, what is the Constitution, what requirements does the Constitution impose on you in the issuing of warrants? You know, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't recall. Well, warrants. Okay, that. warrants but, can only be. But, the Constitution requires that warrants can only be issued uh, where the thing to be searched is explicitly named and where it's searched, and only upon do uh, probable cause. So okay. it's become very common for policemen to just bring a, a warrant and expect a judge to sign it without specifying the thing specifically to be searched, or where it's to be searched, or uh, without really having solid evidence okay. or just now, the hypothesis and conjecture I, I, which is not probable cause. Okay. I understand your question a little bit better. It, it, honestly, I've, I've actually been in chambers, um, or maybe chambers not the right word, I've been in, in Judge Matt's office when officers have come in and, and asked him to review warrants and, and it's not been my experience that, um, that, that that's been the case where they were vague. And, and that one thing that I no, noticed um, is that he studied those things very carefully to make sure that what they were asking him to uh, to uh, do, you know, that, that it was, in fact, you know, as described by you, that they had a specific thing in a specific place and a specific, you know, call it why they were wanting to do it. So, you know, um, again, I, I hope to follow in his footsteps and do, you know, do a good job of doing my thing. So we got time for like two more questions. So, someone who hasn't asked one, Ben. Uh, what's your opinion on truancy laws, and how would you how would you handle truancy cases? Um, I have an eight-year-old son, and 
he is the most important thing in my life, or more than he's not a thing, person, being, you know, whatever. He's, he, he is my life. He's everything. And um, I want him to get a good education. I want him to be a, an excellent contributor to, to society. And the only way he's going to do that is to be in school and, and go to school. So um, that comes before my court. I'm going to do everything in my power to get these kids into school and doing what they're supposed to do. What if it's a homeschool kid who's out during the daytime and so the truancy officer comes in and wants to throw them in school when they actually are homeschooled and their parent allows them to be out during the daytime? Should they be punished because they have different school hours? You know, I think that as a judge you're going to want to have evidence that that's what's going on. And But if, I mean, if you present it with the, with the right evidence and you have the, the right information to make a decision, you know, I can see where that would be justifiable. However, if the kid is out damaging public property or something like that, you will have a different situation. Well, the, well, that's a totally different issue. It's a crime to damage property. We're ta truancy laws make it a crime to just well, be outside minding your own business, <coughs> using public right-of-ways and so on. That's a big difference. You know, people always want to jump into, well, they're out committing a crime. Well, if they're out committing a crime, we have laws in the books against theft okay. and murder and assault and battery and breaking windows and burglary and so on. Truancy laws are say it's a crime, make it a crime to be minding your own business. They're, they make it a crime to simply be out of your house. And that's a, so it shouldn't be lumped, they shouldn't be lumped in with somebody who's out breaking the law. We're talking well, about people that are out. Well, I didn't say that they would, yes. Yeah. They, okay, if they're out breaking the law, though, that's totally unrelated to truancy. That's okay. breaking the law for theft. Okay. So. And I think that's a distinction. A lot of times people, you know, want to defend truancy laws by, oh, well, you know, they're out breaking, they're out damaging property. Well, if they're out damaging property, we have laws against that. Okay. Truancy laws make it a crime to simply be outside your house, minding your own business, lawfully, in lawful okay. activities. And okay. that's you a big know, difference. I, I don't believe in punishing people for, you know, for, I mean, as, as a justice of peace, I'm going to be required to uphold the law, right? But well, which law are you upholding? The Constitution or some county ordinance? And, and how do you decide which of those is the right law? Which, which is, how do you decide ultimately what is right and what is wrong? Again, as I mentioned a while ago, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to be required to uphold the laws that are given to me to uphold by the people. Okay. However, at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, also punishment should fit the crime. And if we have a child who is allowed to be outside by his parent, he's not doing anything wrong. That comes to my court, and I'm given proof, or I understand that this child is homeschooled and he's doing well and he's doing the things he's supposed to do. I'm not going to throw him in jail. I'm not going to, you know. Okay, well, we need to wrap it up, so why don't you give like a two or three minute kind of wrap up, a conclusion, anything else that you want us to know in making our decision. Okay. Um, yeah. um, a lot of great questions tonight, uh, and, and you know, quite a few of them that, that I don't necessarily have the answers to, but um, again, these are all things that can be learned and that will be learned if I, if I you know, gain the office. Um, I believe that uh, one of the things I want to say is that um, you know, somebody mentioned experience and talked about the, the, you know, going up against an experienced candidate. Many of our elected officials are experienced. They're good at what they do, and what they do is they get up there, they get into a position, and they sit there, and they don't change their ways, and they continue to do things that they've always done. Our, our elected officials get stagnant. They don't change. They want to do things the same way. My background, I, I come from, a, from a, 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 a business that is constantly always changing, always evolving, and I've learned to take that and use that. 
I'm, I'm constantly changed. I learn. I learn fast. Um, uh, I, I'm, I think I'm tech, tech, uh, technology minded. I think logically. Um, these are all tools that I think will help me in this office and keep me from making some of the same mistakes that are made today. Um, There, there's um, there, there just I really think that I have the background to, to make a, make a, make an improvement in what's going on here. Uh, I know that um, without a doubt that I can learn some of the things that I don't know about the job and the things that I do know about the job. I'll be able to do a good job. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming, and we appreciate your time. Thank you.